As always, stick around to the end of the video as we'll have a little competition and give away a few more free games of a brand newly released, brand newly released Nintendo Switch title that's just come out. All the info will be at the end. But actually, I don't want to be that guy. That's really annoying. What you have to do is you have to leave a comment down below saying what your favorite Nintendo Switch port is. So please stick around to the end anyway. Nice one. Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. I'm actually recording this <laughs> in my shed because I thought it was a good idea. So if the sound quality is appalling, or you can hear the solar generator thing that I set up going crazy then I apologize. Big thanks to all the new subscribers. This video is going to be all about those ports that made us sit up and go oh my goodness that's on Switch. But I'm also going to talk about the bad side of some of those ports because there are very few ports on Switch that are perfect if any and undoubtedly I'm going to miss loads that you're going to say that's the best one. What are you doing? So I apologize in advance. Which ones are the best? Well let's find out. First up then, and I'm going to lump a few of these together, but we'll start with Doom because it came at a time where the Switch didn't have many powerful, and I use that in air quotes, games. We had a ton of 2D side scrollers, loads of Metroidvanias, uh, hang on, that sounds, that sounds very familiar, but we didn't have any, well, hardly any first person games. And Doom came just at the right moment and proved that not only were panic buttons absolute G's, but they were able to do some incredible tweaking and optimization to make something that actually looked decent. Now, as I said, not all ports are perfect, and here we had Doom, which released very blurry indeed. It still had the overall speed and fluidity, but again, it wasn't running at 60 frames per second, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it didn't have motion controls at launch. I don't think it did. You'll have to let me know, I'm pretty sure it didn't. They improved their efforts with Wolfenstein and then Wolfenstein 2, and with each successive release, they seem to be getting better at porting games to the Switch, but I wouldn't say these are perfect ports, just good ones. Then came Dark Souls, which was one of my most anticipated games coming to the Switch because I just love it. I've got a morbid and strange obsession with that game. I just can't help myself from playing it. It's incredible. And anyone that doesn't like it, unfortunately, is, is just wrong about it. I'm, I'm afraid you're just, just wrong. Now, Dark Souls, the port for, in, for the most part was decent. It didn't seem to be the remastered edition, which actually I was quite pleased about. I preferred the old Xbox graphics. For me, they looked a bit sharper. And yeah, it was basically just the Xbox version. It ran really nicely. Everything was crisp and clear. You had the co-op online, which was great. But something was amiss. The sound quality just, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, I didn't notice it until someone said, stick your headphones on and you're wrong. And then I, I stuck my headphones on and I was like, oh my giddy aunt. Yeah, there definitely is a difference. But I have to say, it was only when I was playing the PC version and then went across did I notice. It's still well worth playing on the Switch, but yeah, weird. Why downsample the sound? <clears throat> Storage money. Yeah. And then there was Warframe, which was another one that came as a bit of a surprise to most people. I remember staying up all night playing that one for review, and again, just being hugely impressed by the amount of detail they'd managed to cram into the Nintendo Switch. And performance wasn't half bad either, it was decent. Now, there were the occasional stutters and jitters in that one, but for the most part it was a semi-decent port, and I think it left most people quite impressed and excited about what the Switch could potentially do further down the line. I didn't have any issues with sound quality there, but the load times were certainly a little chunky, with some of the larger areas being a touch laggier later in the game. Now the first Darksiders, the War Mastered Edition on the Nintendo Switch was a fantastic port. It ran silky smooth, you had a performance mode, a quality mode, and it really was almost, I would say, probably a perfect port. Now, it wasn't the most technically challenging game to bring across to the Switch, but the amount of care and attention that went into bringing that across really showed. And it was odd because the sequel just didn't have that same care and attention. There were huge frame drops and lag spikes and no performance mode. It just didn't seem to have that same love, really. So for me, I would say Darksiders War Mastered Edition is the one that really shines on the Switch. Yeah. 
one by one the different developers seem to be approaching the Switch with a touch more optimism than they were at the start. It had something to do with the wonderful presentation that the Switch could deliver and large quantities of cash that they could make. <laughs> and then we saw the Sniper Elite games come across. Now the first one was decent but it was Sniper Elite 3, the Switch port with the lovely co-op mode and the more open world style maps that really appealed to Glenn and I as we played online co-op. Everything just ran flawlessly, it was lovely. Synchronising your shots to try and take out the Nazis and working your way through loads of different campaigns across different parts of the world, it was great. I was really impressed by that. Everything ran smoothly, you had motion controls, you had HD rumble. This is top notch stuff and very impressive on the Switch. It was around about this time, maybe around about after Sniper Elite 3 released, that suddenly like the floodgates just opened and we started to see so many other ports come across to the Switch and some of them incredible. I've got to give a real shout out to the Metro games. We had Metro the Redux bundle come across and my goodness, if these aren't the, some of the best ports I've ever seen, I don't know what is. They're incredible. They featured motion controls or gyro aiming if you want to call it that, which everyone knows that I love. Yes, yes, I know not everyone likes it. There's always the guy in the comments who says I avoid it all right it's fine we're all friends but the visuals they were so crispy the dynamic lighting was perfect it was on point and it really pleased me because the developers actually had to create a few proprietary visual techniques to make it look this good on the switch and hats off to you it's it's worked performance was solid as well throughout all the audio came across at the right sample rate and it just began to feel at this time that developers were going all right it doesn't you know it's not okay to just pull absolute crap to the switch that's not to say we haven't had a fair share of crap in that time but this was a great port now i should have stuck with spyro reignited trilogy uh, as that was a great addition to the switch and again it was another one where people were a touch skeptical as to how it would run but they put the effort in and it looked great ran well had a touch of blurriness to it at times but overall presented a really good image on the switch And then the 2K games arrived as well, my goodness. So we had the Bioshock 1 to 3, which looked stunning, but I was really impressed. The performance was top notch, and it is top notch, and it's impressive. There are a few visual quirks, like I noticed it doesn't seem to translate onto video, but I noticed some strange pixelation around the outsides of objects, and I mentioned that it was perhaps something to do with the anti-aliasing technique that they were using to remove jaggy edges, but my main gripe with the Bioshock ports were that there was no gyroscopic aiming, which, and I know I'm not alone in this, makes it really tough to aim for most people. Now that being said, for anyone who's not interested in that then you're, you're laughing really not no problems at all but it was an issue for me and even stranger when compared to the next port borderlands you got borderlands 1 2 and the pre-sequel which again very nice 30 frames per second native resolution thank you very much everyone's laughing but this time around they had a custom proprietary built gyroscopic gaming technique which was great and why wasn't it <laughs> why wasn't it in the other game now all of these titles feature lag lag at times and some drops as regards borderlands and bioshock now i was quite impressed though that borderlands was able to achieve 30 frames per second while splitting the screen i mean that's come on that's pretty decent isn't it I know the game is what, eight years old or whatnot, but it's still such a fun title to play through. And it's nice to see a lot of my pals in the community like Lee Wynn playing it for the first time and really sinking his teeth into it and enjoying it as quality. A little bit before this we had the Assassin's Creed 3 which was shocking when it launched in terms of some of the performance drops but then we had the Assassin's Creed 4 the Rebel Collection which that was decent I was really impressed with that overall quite promising there were a few strange things but that's kind of part of the engine used but still yeah they were they were semi decent Now you probably thought this one was going to be number one, but it's not going to be number one, and I'll tell you for why. It's because it just, 
one of the main things that I love about this game when I'm playing it on the PC are the visuals. And I still like them on the Switch, but I don't love them on the Switch. And that's The Witcher 3 or The Switcher if you want to be <laughs> a bit cringy. It was amazing. Look, don't get me wrong. Incredible to have this come across. Amazing that CD Projekt Red put the time in to put the whole thing on a cartridge. I mean, that's looking at 2K. I mean, come on now. But yeah, it, it just didn't look like the game that I remembered in terms of all the visual features. Now, it still is fine. It's still playable. If it's your first time on the Switch, you're going to enjoy it a lot. But the downgrade is definitely real. Now, these last three titles, I would say, are as close as you can come to the original games. And sometimes even going a little bit further than the originals got Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Now they used every trick in the book including pre-recorded footage that seamlessly blends into the action and honestly if you can't tell that it's pre-recorded do you really care that it's pre-recorded and for me the answer is no, no I don't. It looks amazing and as you sail in on that boat at the start of the game you know that this is going to be a good port. They've also got the binaural audio that makes its way into the title and playing that in handheld with a set of headphones is just special experience. Great game. Really looking forward to the sequel which I believe is already in the works. Let's hope that comes to the Switch a bit more quickly. Coming in at number two then is Dragon Quest XI, which is an incredible, I'm going to say port, but actually they included a lot of new stuff for the Switch version. So again, this is another example of where a developer goes, look, we could just port it across and we could do a, a damn good job of it, but why don't we actually make the effort and put the special stuff in there as well? And I love that, that's quality. And they did that with Dragon Quest XI-S, and to be honest, this could be number one. It probably should be number one because it's got that extra stuff in it, but a fantastic port, ran beautifully, looks amazing, and you're not gonna be disappointed playing that one. Now for me, number one, uh, this might be controversial, I don't know, is Alien Isolation. They did an incredible job with this one. If you've watched the Digital Foundry performance analysis, they, they tore it apart, they stripped it back, and the only conclusion that they could come to in the end was that this was so close to the PS4 version, and that some of the aspects of it they actually preferred, which is an unbelievable statement. Now I know that's possibly to do with the fact that there's been all this time since the PS4 version's released, and the porting team found a few new techniques that they could apply to the Switch version, but still, even that sentence it might look better than the PS4 version in some places. You, you never thought you'd hear that very often. Well, you don't, do you? Let's be honest. And that's why it's number one. All of these ports I've been happy to see on the Switch, but there are a few that didn't quite go to plan. So let's find out which ones I think are the stinkers. As long as my daughter doesn't hear me, I'll be fine, right? The first one is LEGO City Undercover. Now, I love this game. I've had a great time playing it, really enjoy it, but let's not beat around the bush. If you're playing split screen with someone, the performance is horrible. I mean, it's hovering around about 20 frames per second, which is enough to just break your brain. It really isn't great. I know it's seen a few patches since launch, but the performance, and it's the case for some of the other LEGO games as well, actually. The performance just isn't as good as it should be, and they need to put more time in it. Let's be honest they've got the money for it so yeah that would be my first one and you know what my second one is actually going to be minecraft the bedrock edition now i had minecraft back when it launched on the switch I was having a great time on the legacy really enjoying it no issues well all right that's a lie there were a few issues but nothing major and then they launched bedrock across all platforms which was essentially well it's running on the mobile engine isn't it and it, i just had all kinds of crazy issues to the point where i actually made a video about the 10 things that were causing me grief but yeah i mean again it's another one that it shouldn't be the case they should be putting in the time and effort to make sure it doesn't run like poo and there's still issues on it so yeah that is my other stinker even though it is a great game and an absolute all-time classic it's annoying <laughs> I know I've missed loads of good ports, loads of bad ports. I've literally just scrolled past Skyrim and, and it looked at me accusingly. So, uh, yeah. Let me know down in the comments, what's your top port on the Nintendo Switch and why? And remember, we give away free games every single week all the time actually at the moment and we've just been given a load of copies of a brand new Switch release. I won't tell you which one because that will spoil the excitement. 
but let me know down in the comments which is your favourite port and why. And as always, for all things Switch, oh, a big thanks to our patrons. They support us every single month, and I think we've had four new patrons in the last couple of days. I keep telling you not to do it. I don't, I'm not doing that as like a reverse psychology. Like, <laughs> genuinely, if you can't afford to be a patron, please don't. Um, but we do really appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!